Okay, I want your insights on what we can expect out of the second half because global equities are up around 30% from their low in October of last year. And as we come into the second half, Goldman Sachs says the risks for equity holders are rising. They say growth momentum is slowing, valuations are elevated, markets are concentrated, political uncertainty is elevated. So what's your view? Can the gains be sustained through the second half? We share the reservations around what might come forth in the markets. We've had a very strong first half of the year, and we do believe that reservations, particularly anchored around the political change, is something that all investors are thinking about. That doesn't mean you shouldn't stay invested. So we're still invested, uh, thinking more in the credit markets as a real opportunity in private credit, while thinking more strategically and geopolitically around which economies and which markets you want to do, and perhaps diversifying more than you have been doing today out of the Magnificent Seven, out of some of the markets that have moved well, and into some of the less covered markets. So, Rob, if geopolitics and elections are going to be key themes for markets through the second half, where do you want to be invested? Again, private credit with interest rates around the developed markets at over 5% continue to be really an anchor of our tactical asset allocation. We believe in private credit giving up liquidity for some of the uncertainty in the public markets. And those kind of yields really are a compelling anchor to any portfolio. But we also want to match that allocation with emerging markets, with Japan, where we see, and you guys highlighted very well, uh, the Japanese market, which we think continues to be a compelling opportunity where you're taking equity exposure. We're proudly Canadians, and we also think the Canadian market gives diversification for many North American exposures. We also believe in Australia and New Zealand, where we think there's opportunities. So some of the markets which are a little bit ancillary, where geopolitical risks are lower, but yet we still have that immigration growth and confidence uh, of some of the bigger economies as well.